would we be this morning if uh, if we hadn't had you know this extraordinary intervention over the weekend? I think it's pretty obvious that uh, you'd be looking at multiple additional sizable uh, bank failures uh, this morning or over the course of today. Uh, in my mind, uh, unarrested, that would really just sort of uh, ripple right through uh, the food chain, so to speak, until you got effectively all the way up to the GSIBs. Some very significant percentage of people, um, you know, both individuals and businesses, are going to vote with their feet here. On no question, <clears throat> they're going to rethink, you know, their their willingness to be where they're at, um, and they're going to move. The takedown of Signature over the weekend, uh, you know, was obviously extraordinary. I mean, Signature Bank is not a small bank; 110 billion in assets. 29th largest bank in the country. Uh, I think we knew it had problems going into the weekend. You could see that reflected in the equity price. Obviously, there were a lot of crypto dynamics there. Uh, we saw Silvergate collapse and, and announce its intent to wind down. So there was sort of all of the, those preconditions uh, were met. But nevertheless, to see it just shuttered over the weekend, um, you know, total wipeout, obviously, for uh, both equity holders and, and um, you know, unsecured uh, debt holders. What do the CRE loan books look like on, on some of these banks and um, who who extended what credit where? My, my suspicion is just having been through this one time before, and I know you and Steiner have been through it multiple times, is that like you never you never really um, you never really understand all of the second and third order effects until they happen. They use the term FUD, which is uh, an acronym for fear, uncertainty and doubt which you should never have any of those things in that world, fear, uncertainty, or doubt. Pretty depressing uh, to be sitting here 15 years later after GFC and it's like, w we didn't fix anything from last, like, <laughs> like it's like just the same, same horrible risk uh, at the center of everything. It's amazing how uh, quickly things can change, right? Um, <clears throat> but as you say, as always said, risk happens slowly then all at once. Um, and, and to that point, you know, VC funded direct to consumer startups uh, tend to spend a lot of money on direct response advertising. So obviously any threat to their liquidity um, or any type of shock like this is negative on the margin for ad spend. My point on this is that A, it's not over and B, there's going to be a whole set of new behavioral realities born out of the government's decision here. Like, really, is, does the FDIC matter anymore? Or does it matter? Do you have unlimited, you know, backstop on any deposit into any bank in America? I mean, these are massive questions. Don't think of this like with what they call in behavioral psych, like a recency bias. Recency bias is staring at what just happened, having this kind of breather and not understand or try to understand what the nonlinear functions and linear functions are associated with this. So again, Anyone who is in the business of VC storytelling, levering up their own personal account, doing whatever with crypto, that's over. Like <laughs> That is a significant part of the mother of all bubbles in both the assets that were priced you know, by virtue of that behavior and the economy that was embedded in it. That's, that's a massive component of the economy. You know, the corporate side, I think, comes under intense pressure to mark to reality. Hey there, Hedgeye Nation. Or if you're not part of Hedgeye Nation, thanks for watching Hedgeye on YouTube. If you haven't already, make sure to click on the button below there. Subscribe to our YouTube page. You can also follow the link in the description to our website to get even more great investing content.